Recording is on. Okay, so welcome. We're here at the Learning Bitcoin and Design session number, I don't know, uh, but the title is Open Design, and for once it's not Stephen presenting, uh, it's me leading this topic. Um, and it is a topic that I spent a good amount of time with. The, I actually did a presentation on this um, a couple of weeks ago. I was in Portugal at a conference and the topic of the presentation that you see here in my background, hopefully you can see it. Nope, you can't because I need to switch over in. Mm -hmm. So this is why I think my presentation. The topic was actually open design where I went through my experiences, you know, and the kind of the open, the open design in the design community and then kind of a theory on it. But, um, and I can share some of that stuff later. But I was actually wondering if we should start kind of more from scratch and just see where everybody else is at on this topic and what they think of it, what questions they have instead of me just rambling on. Um, and a, another good piece of um, information we have is the open design page in the design guide, which I will now share a link to in the chat here on the side. And so I did the very early on when we started the guide, this is one of the pages I worked on, did a lot of research. And surprisingly, there was almost no research or very little information on the topic of open design. You can find books and just thousands of, of you know, websites about open source, like open coding, or if you want to call it that way, but thinking about the way designers can, in a kind of a very intuitive way, navigate this open collaboration, there was just, almost nothing. So it was kind of hard to find things. But so, so I did one sec one version of this page, then Alexa did a revision. And that's basically where that is right now. But I just wanted to actually open it up first. Um, where is everyone on this topic? What does it sound like to you? What does it mean? Anyone want to want to start? I can go. So I came across this a couple of weeks back when I started doing my um, desk research on Bitcoin. I just wanted to do a case about a topic I was interested in and I picked Bitcoin. And I was quite surprised to say that there is, uh, I knew that the code was in source, but I had no idea that there was a whole open design. Some things made me a bit confused because I know that there are some apps going on and then um, there is this whole open design and I'm not sure if the app exists. Uh, so I'm kind of lost there. Um, I quite liked how organized this is and, and how inviting it is for people to just join and collaborate. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm a user researcher and that's it. <laughs> um, I'd love to go. I, um, I'm the principal content designer at Cash App. And I think um, for me, what it, the, the, the potential of this is to create a set of design standards, user experience design standards that enable interoperability between apps, which is so essential for, you know, um, Bitcoin to take off and work. Um, so for me, it's like what what rises to the level of a, of a design standard that we all agree upon so that, you know, um, interacting between wallets is seamless. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So there's this, um, you know, I think phrase I heard at one point, there was something to the effect of like, um, you know, you could have a, a project that's open source, but that doesn't mean that it's um, develop, that it's open development, right? Um, I know I'm talking about code here, but I think it, it relates to the topic of open design. Like you could have something, uh, a project, a piece of software where the code is completely open source. Anyone can do whatever they want with you. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it was constructed or built in an open way. Like it could have been, um, you know, where where uh, the people who build it are actually, uh, you know, do do so in private and you know don't accept suggestions and don't have a path to onboarding people um, to uh, contributing to the project and all of that. So when you hear the phrase "open design," it sounds kind of like the uh, the opposite of that. It's it's actually kind of very openly. We're, we're designing this openly, we're designing this in public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's also the, the reason why I attend because we want to do this on, um, with Albi actually, Albi should be built in, in public and it's then not only like developers 
who can contribute, but also designers who can contribute and uh, also who should contribute. But um, how do we enable them? Um, how do we like, yeah, welcome them um, and guide them um, in a way that they can actually contribute? Um, and um, so, th so right now um, we do not have yet have a like specific uh, person who takes care of that. That's why I'm here, but um, and want to learn more. Um, but um, this is this is um, very essential for us, um, especially in in such an early stage. Yeah, and I think Albi has been around for a year now, more than a year. And I think you've been completely open this whole time and really actually made that made that happen, work completely in the open, be open for people to participate and all that. And I think that's worked out really well. So good job in doing that. Um, so the, there's, the, there's the theme of, of open collaboration. And so I wanna hop in here in, in, on that. I'd like to hop in and go to, if you can see this in my background here, Can anyone see that? Sure yeah. can. Okay. So this is a this is a this is opendesign.org 1999. That's when the, this was the earliest um, mission statement or definition of open design that I found, which was actually pretty good. Looks horrible. I don't think any much really came out of that. Um, but I think there are there's some good stuff in here. Uh, you know, it talks about here this alternative method for designing and develop technology based on free exchange of comprehensive design information. Um, you know, I think that Anna, that's what, what you mentioned earlier. Then there's the idea of a collaborative space, which the design community kind of works. I think that's really important that there is that neutral space, neutral common ground. I think developers have, developers kind of have GitHub for that. And a lot of them on an IRC kind of as a communication channel on top. I don't think designers have that really. Uh, and then the another thing here is that balance between the independence of the individual designer and the collective power of collaboration, because everybody here has something that they care about. You know, like you have your freedom, you can show up on this call or you don't, but it's just, you can do whatever you want. You shape your own space, which then also means you have your own responsibility. So you need to deal with uh, a lot of ambiguity. And then the collective power of collaboration, you know, if people really care, they come together and they can make something cool. Maybe they can make things that maybe an agency or a company will not, or a government will not produce because their incentives are different. People show up in different places. So ideally you can create really unique stuff here. And then, you know, at the bottom here, I need to get my head out of the way. These promote design projects, motive, Motivated by personal conviction and passion for the greater benefit of society. So, Bea, you mentioned earlier that you know you kind of went down the rabbit hole now, and it's kind of become your your interest and your passion, and you're pushing in that direction now. I think that's a good uh, example of that. So that's that's kind of a, a kind of a top level idea of open design. And then maybe what more was talked about was more kind of the the tactical day to day level of of open collaboration. Just how you know how you how you make sure a project is welcoming how you allow people to contribute in, a, in an easy way. Like even if they don't understand GitHub, like how do you, you know, bridge some of those gaps? So uh, try to summarize here a little bit. How does, uh, how does all that sound and make sense? And yeah, any thoughts on those things? So I think it's a real, um, it's a real tragedy that that image is broken on the previous page. Um, that was probably a real like beautiful like 1990s to, like late 90s you know web <laughs> logo and it's just lost i'm He's... sure it was like an animated gif or something it was probably incredible yeah i tried to go through different different uh, uh states of the web archive but there's nothing else to be found there <laughs> Um, but, you know, so clearly the idea has been around for a long time, for 20 something years, but it hasn't really taken off in a way. I'm kind of curious sometimes why that is. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know why that is. I would, I would also be wondering why that is, because in my opinion, it's the best way of working. So, you know, but I'm just biased. So, yeah. I mean, 
so one yeah, of the things that I, I, f- oh, go I ahead, feel Natalie. like as a, um, as a designer, sometimes like we're very protective of our work. And like, if someone does like, um, like takes off work, it's sort of, we think they copied it, but as developers, they copy and paste code all the time. So I think maybe there's something in play with that. Maybe that, Maybe that's why we don't see open design as much in a sense. So I would argue um, designers steal designs all the time, but they don't talk about it. I think we're all learning from each other and inspired by each other, but there's not necessarily that collective collaboration to establish some sort of intentionality about what what we believe is the best sort of shared solution. Um, So maybe that's what's missing because If you think about, you know, just um, an iPhone app, there's kind of a design standard there that just happened with like a menu at the bottom and a little drawer that opens sometimes or like the hamburger menu. And it just sort of happened. Um, And we all, you know, I'm curious to know, you know, who invented that. (laughs) Um, But we all sort of like built on top of that. And good design sort of rises to the top because people start to understand them as you know conventions or get used to them but I think the difference here potentially is like you you put some intentionality behind what we believe is like the best shared um, solution at some level Uh, for me what's overwhelming is that collaborative aspect like how do you come together as different designers and how do you come to some sort of consensus so I'm curious about that um, and, and points of view on on that level that's a good question from Anna. Um, I would love to to discuss that more, what she said, how different designers come together in the open source community and just make everything, you know, open and, and better. Um, I think uh, to get back just one, one little bit, um, coders are tool builders. I mean, they built their own, they built Git and GitHub and like billion and other things. And they, they've, they've really effectively managed that if, if I can create a code library, I can put it on GitHub and put some other terminal stuff in there. And then it'll show up on npmjs.com or wherever. And then with two other lines of code, I can pull it into my other project. Like they've made everything so, so, so it, it can travel so easily between people and plug into other workflows. Um, maybe design doesn't work that way or, or we haven't built that way or we haven't built ourselves the same tools. So I think there's just a lot more more friction. It, it's funny when you think about it that it, somebody could spend um, weeks writing a piece of code and um, then decide that they want to put it online for free. And then when they find that somebody has, you know, taken their library and installed it, they'll feel honored. Like, oh my God, somebody's using my work. This is incredible. And then the designer approach will be, well, you'll, instead of spending weeks on a piece of code, you'll spend weeks on, you know, I don't know, maybe some cool illustration. And if somebody takes it and uses it, you'll be like, hey, that's mine. You can't do that. It's completely, it's like, it's like, it's almost the exact same story, but it ends differently. Um, one uh, at the um, recently, I also talked to an, an illustrator, and she's uh, she's worked for lots of really well-known magazines. She's part of the illustrator community too, and she is very curious about putting illustration work out there and having it remixed and collaborating. But she's just she doesn't dare to do it because all the community of all these other well-known illustrators that she's part of they hate it, they despise it, they will banish her because. And she said that. Part of it is that they feel so strongly about their work and that um, a big part of what they get taught is to put their personality into their illustration style that represents them and who they are. And if they if they give anything away, you know, they lose, you know, they give up some of themselves or their status or what makes them unique. So there's a very, very deep personal connection with their work. And she also said that they're you know all super nerds and they just want to sit in their room and draw. And by themselves, <laughs> I don't know how much truth is in that one, but it was really interesting how she talked about this very deep connection with their work and, the, and like the specific details and then giving it away or, or 
being open about it just runs pretty counter to that. That also might be a generational thing. I'm not sure on this one. And I feel like there's almost like a, a unionized aspect to it, um, at least with the designers I know here in the US. That's like, they, they, there's not like there's like a graphic designers union or anything, but a lot of times designers act like they're part of a union. And it's like, um, you know, it, it's like, you know, giving away things for free or also like if you have like a price list, that's like, that's like a sign that you're kind of like commoditizing your work in a way. Um, and 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 so it's it, it, there's also like this economic side to it of like oh we have to kind of hold the line and you know keep prices at a certain level or you know you need your clients to go this through this particular process to figure out what it's going to cost and and all of that and you you can't just publish these these things openly so yeah i've also witnessed this kind of economic um incentive to that as well this has just got me thinking about a totally unrelated industry, but I remember the story behind Spotify when Spotify was first created and, um, you know, all of the music at the time, all of the people were buying records and purchasing individual things from, from the shop, you know, or online. And then Spotify just came and said, you know, we'll just make everything open and here's the app, here's everything available for everyone. And that's almost a little bit like I see a little bit of a connection with that, but then with open source being years later with that in the design aspect, because it's almost like the way that Spotify just openly shares all the music. And, you know, I don't know what the how they make money, to be honest, but that still works pretty well. Um, and that's everything out in the open. And that's not the individual music producer saying, hey, you know, you have to pay me directly to have access to my music. So yeah, that's just my little two cents. I think so. Did yeah, I lose Christoph? So. Yes. Yes, you did. No, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> cool. Was somebody talking? Didn't don't want to interrupt. Um Yeah, what what were we talking about? <laughs> um I think we were, uh -huh. ta we were talking about, I think Mo was saying, um, you know, it was interesting how music is out there in the open for anybody to hear um, mm -hmm. at some level. And like, how does that work? How could, how could a Spotify model um, for sharing design work? Is that right? I think that mm -hmm. just to catch you up, I think it's just like, there's, there's just like, there could be another model for collab open design where we're showing our work more and we're, we're sharing more. Um, but then there's also that part of like designers have to make money. So the, it's, it, 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 there's, that was part of the conversation too. Just like part of the reason why people are sort of, you know, um, into keeping their designs close to the chest is because that's how they, you know, make an income. So what's the balance? Yeah, when, um, what this illustrator told me, so I basically told her the same thing I said earlier, you know, if you work with an open group of people, your crews produce different things that can be, that are not the same things that you will produce by yourself. And that can be really cool in itself. Um, and one of the things that she referred to also was open peeps, which there's a link to here in the, in the chat, which is, so this uh, Pablo Stanley, he made this library of different character pieces. And I used that on the open design page, actually, for that for that illustration. And so he just he just gave all that. He just made those publicly available. These characters, um, 
And I think one of the things you could do in addition, so now now you can download a Figma file or a sketch file and use these. I think to take it a step further, he could also create a mechanism for other people to contribute their own ones. Like there's a difference between you create something and you share it. Like you make an icon, somebody else can use the icon. You create a graphic an illustration, somebody else uses it as is. But I think we don't have that part where other designers change it, where they add on to it where maybe two years down the road, the illustrations look really different. I think that's something where we're, we're kind of uncomfortable with. And the reason I'm saying that is that um, working on the Bitcoin UI kit and Bitcoin icons, sometimes people request something, but nobody dares to go into the files <laughs> and suggest changes or, or change anything about it. I, I feel like there's a hurdle here where coders, they're more like, your code is wrong. Here's, I'm going to hack something together. Here's make it better, accept it. Have you all heard of the Noun Project? Have you all used mm -hmm. icons in the Noun Project? I think they have an interesting model because they were really trying to do that for icons, essentially, um, where people can contribute um, to their library. And then you can choose, you know, how are you going to use those icons and then pay accordingly. So that's the monetary side. But then I think that was also interesting. They also established standards for contributions, um, which I think is is really important part of like you know what a, a consortium around bitcoin design could do is like what are those standards for co contributing to a kind of joint file um sort of like library repository not file but um so i think that's an interesting model to sort of um think about when you think about uh what we could provide to the greater world as designers if we come together and develop standards or or you know um things to share and reuse. Yeah, and like the whole contribution process around um, like icons and design and stuff can get pretty tricky. I'm not, I'm curious, be curious to learn about what their exact process is, but I think like one of the things um, that, you know, uh, like Christoph probably struggles with on like Bitcoin icons and the UI kit and stuff like that is that like, Figma doesn't have the like the same like version controlling capabilities that GitHub seems to, or at least not in the price point. I think we can afford, and it's um, uh, you know, it'd be nice to it, it would be nice to be able to like have people go in and like modify the file and submit a change. And um, I think we kind of like don't know exactly the best the best way to handle that sort of thing. I think I think our next learning Bitcoin design session, we're actually gonna. Uh, mess around with pen pot some and like try to do like a group project just so we can like teach ourselves pen pot just to kind of learn some other tools but i think like definitely the the contribution process for design isn't always as like organized and clean as like github is yeah and, and <clears throat> so with the bitcoin icons here uh you know if you're familiar with the project it's uh I can set, there's a Figma plugin, you can get the Figma file itself. There are different code modules. And um, the release process here is, I mean, it's a wreck. It's so complex. It takes forever to just release updates to, to this whole thing. It's so complex that I wouldn't, and actually preparing the icons, even if you draw it really nicely, before it can actually be exported, it still takes like half an hour to actually fix it up in a way that the exports are really clean. And um, so I'm saying that because I, I feel like there will always be just a, a small group of people at the core of every project that just kind of tie all the lo those little bits together. Just like in Bitcoin Core, there are like two people that understand the build system. Uh, and then you have larger groups of people that you know, participate in many different ways. Somebody says, I want an icon for this, you know, purpose in for my application, or, you know, I'll, I'll come up with some few sketches for some icon. And then those circles kind of get smaller and smaller. And uh, I feel like that's the way it is with the guide also, where uh, giving ideas, sharing, having conversations, all of that stuff is super helpful. And then it kind of gets still distilled into small into the like the final thing by you know smaller circles of people i was just messing around on their um how to like how to contribute section i dropped a link in the chat they've got a very appealing looking how to contribute page
Also, early days, I was a part of, um, like in 2011, I helped to host iconathons um, where people would come together and actually sketch um, to contribute to uh, the Noun Project, which is was it's kind of another fun way to get people together and think about standards um, in an open way. So something to think about as well is this idea of a hackathon for designers um, where you're co-creating. And that would be a question is like, how common are those those design hackathons in the open source community? And how popular are they? I've, I've never come across one. Maybe there's somewhere else I should be looking or. I don't know if they fell out of favor. I mean, there used to be more hackathons in general, I think. And now over the years, I haven't seen as many, but um, yeah. Yeah, just like a UX hackathon, if you could even call it a hackathon. Designathon. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, had we, in San Francisco. We've had them. I don't know. Sorry, Christoph. Keeps... Sorry, I just keep talking. Go ahead. No, we've had. I've, I've I've been I've participated in those before. They're few and far between. They're not quite, you know, necessarily well attended. But people who are interested tend to show up. Um, and if you make them fun and interesting, and I don't know, have prizes, they can be compelling to people. <laughs> Yeah, for the for the Bolt Fund Shock the Web Hackathon, uh, John's had a, a special prize for best design. I think that's a good entrance for all kinds of hackathons where it's not just, you know, th th there's a special track for design. And Stephen, didn't the MIT, there was some other hackathon that also had this. And then on top hey. of that, a long a time ago, we were discussing having like a design exploration week where it's one week and you just, you make something specific, you come up with a cool concept, whatever, you couldn't make happen you know, during your day to day. You just kind of go at it during that week with a few people, but nothing specific has been planned yet. Well, yeah, I was I was working last year on a project to try and do a designathon, which was going to be a kind of like a hackathon that no code allowed. Um, you know, specifically designs to, designs to onboard designers. That's a lot of usages of the word design in a single sentence. But here we are. Um, uh, yeah, I think I just got too busy to deal with it, but you know, I could always put that project back together. Just throwing a random idea out there, but it, I think it would be really interesting. And I guess if there would be interest, so like all the little projects, you know, that are in the Bitcoin design community, like Albi and Zeus and, you know, Bitcoin core <laughs> is to do like, you know, just look at one aspect of their user flow. And then just kind of do a do a, a designathon around that, and actually see if people would be interested. You know, just hey, you know, let's all just jump on and design the onboarding experience of Albi, for example. And you know, who's interested? You know, let's just, you know, it's obviously a time dedication, um, but yeah, that would be that would be interesting, I think. And they're, the hackathons are really fun. It's just the energy and everything. It's just, you know, yeah. Do you mean like a uh, event itself? Because the wallet improvement project is pretty much that in a sense. Yeah, well, I think something more time dense. So like maybe like three days where you're just dedicating, you know, four hours of everybody just jumping on a call in a very well facilitated, structured way. And you're just looking at maybe five or six screen states together. I don't know. I'm literally just thinking out loud. I'm not, you know. Yeah, I I mean, for me, what's, what would be worthwhile is some of them, okay, there's one design problem in particular that I'm like, I really think we all need to solve, which is within a scanner having a paste button, which happens, <laughs> with pasting address in a scanner experience, which is something that we have on Cash App, which a lot of, this is just a workaround. Like, could we have a better standard around that? Like we have, there are certain problems unique to Bitcoin, I think, that we could start to identify as problems that we just all need to solve together in order to make, you know, the user experience um, something that like normal people can understand and, and, and get through and have that be a standard across all apps. So if we think of those like top UX problems that we're, we're all looking at them and we're just like, why do we do it this way? Um, you know, what, another thing is that the address, a Bitcoin address is really scary, frankly. 
like it's it's letters and numbers. It's very intimidating. The idea that you you know transactions are final and that if you send it the wrong way, you could lose your money. Like what are the like some of these things I think are are things that we should we could all be you know working on together to solve in a kind of, in a hackathon environment. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, so these things, they, they really live off of somebody just saying, I care about this and just running with it and making something happen. Like the Albi project, they're like, we want, we care about onboarding. This is Albi onboarding week. Let's, let's work on this. Or Steven says, I want to make this design a thon happen. And he just runs with it and pulls it all together. And then I, th I think when you, when you start something like that and you, you, you know, it can be really small things. It could be many conversations on Slack. You could be joining some relevant call and bringing things up. And then, you know, like I said earlier, you, you become the person that has to tie it together then, uh, kind of the, the PM of this particular effort or PM of this particular project that makes sure that there's some final output at the end. Um, and that, that can be anyone, really. It just needs really needs to be somebody who cares and kind of pushes, pokes people a little bit and kind of sets up a call and makes things happen. But that's, that's how I see it. They're all really good ideas, uh, but it usually comes down to somebody just hopping in and doing it. So um, I remember on... Uh kind of like how this like conversation got started last or whenever the last learning Bitcoin and design call was um, got started. Cause I think some people asked some questions like, um, you know, not entirely sure how to contribute to Bitcoin design, or I'm not entirely sure how to contribute to other Bitcoin projects I see in the ecosystem. Like I'm not sure the best way to go about um, getting involved in their projects. And then, you know, Moritz was obviously trying to learn more about, um, you know, in, how to integrate designers into the project and all of that. So I guess I just wanted to figure out if anybody had any like kind of specific questions or anything like that, that they were things they were confused about. I do. So I see, for example, in the Bitcoin.design website, it's very clear if you want to contribute, here's what where you go. But then when I go into GitHub and I see the issues, I see, for example, I'm, I'm even looking for things to do I would like to engage in, um, but I don't know where to start or what to do. Um, so that part is not completely clear. So what you just mentioned makes total sense for me because I feel exactly that way. I'm not entirely clear what I can do to help, you know? And I would like, um, so, um, Christoph mentioned that um, it's easy for us to, or for people to give feedback, but hardly everyone is ever, is actively doing the changes either in the design or in code or whichever. Um, yeah, I, for instance, would like to assist with the design and doing research, but I don't know where to start. Yeah, so there's there's a couple couple of, you know, places, you know, and, and for one, we're always looking for ways we can um, communicate this stuff better. So um, our, our documentation may not be perfect. One kind of quick place you can start is if you're, if you, you said you had found your way onto the GitHub issues page, there's a way you can sort by different labels. And there's a label called a good first issue. And what those are, they may not be the most exciting issues in the world, but they're like things that are like small, kind of self-contained, um, you know, maybe easy, easily achievable kind of things, which which are good ways, um, you know, if you just kind of like want an excuse to find something to work on just so you learn, you know, you, you have a um, kind of a self-contained um, task you can do uh, to, to learn how to work with the guide and all that. I think that's probably um, one of the best places to start. Many different projects and, and open source sites that have that good first issue label, but um, we've got several right there. Um, another another place to start might be um, 
we do a call uh, about every three weeks, I guess, called the, it's just called a, the design guide jam. And it's, it's kind of a more of like a higher level strategy thing where several of us get together. I mean, it's, it's open to the public. Um, so anyone can join, but we get together to talk about um, uh, just like what our, our next like strategy is like, you know, sometimes with, if you're trying to do something really big, like um, change the navigation of the site or add lightning to the guide, you can't really, uh, you know, you can't really con consolidate that cleanly just into like an issue description, right? So the the jam calls are are there to, you know, so everybody can learn about, you know, what we're working on and um, what our goals are and, and stuff like that. And then kind of a third way is uh, if, uh, you know, you, you see something that you feel like is uh, missing, um, you can always jump into the Slack channel, start a conversation about it. Some people draft things up in Google Drive or they draft up things on Figma that they like and just share them in the Slack channel. Um, or you can open an issue too if there's, you know, specific things. Sometimes you get people who say, you know, the guy didn't say this one piece of information. What do I do here? And they'll open an issue uh, um, to try and get people talking about it. Okay. Um, yeah, the good first issue, I said that there are currently no open issues, so... Um, oh, that's how did oh, I guess they all got cleaned up then, man. <laughs> unless all of the illustrations I, are done. No, no. Uh, now I tell you what. Um, or did we have a long wrong link or something? I was going to say, I wonder. Um, it might actually be in the um, the uh, Bitcoin Design Meta repo, which is huh. basically a repository more for like community standards, like the rules, um, the calendar, stuff like that. And then uh, on the actual guide, um, that that's like kind of the, the main website where we have all the kind of design standard documentation. Let me see if I can pull this up and Okay, now I'm in the link. guide project. Good, first, there we go. Here we go. Okay, so it looks like there's a couple of things. So I'll paste a link into it right here. Um, Okay, I see it. And, uh, you know, that's something I, Bosch and I were just talking about. Uh, so, um, especially with illustrations, there's sometimes we've seen, you know, somebody asked for an illustration, but didn't really say what they wanted, like what they were expecting. And then somebody just made a final illustration and like it didn't really match. Uh, so I think the, I think it's really up to the people who create issues to be very specific. You know, not really say exactly, I, you know, have, you know, what each pixel should look like, but have some good guidance for anyone to pick things up. And I think sometimes we're not that good at that. Uh, and then I think if you find something, just ask a question. Just say, hey, I'd like to do this. Can we hop on a call or just ask on Slack? Like, hey, I want to do this. Anyone want to just start with kind of the smallest thing that you can. Um, and then people, I think they're usually really happy that somebody, you know, uh, pops up and then, and then you can you can have that conversation before uh, before spending too much time. Okay. Um, I think something else that that helped me um, last week when I tried to um, um, do my first PR was um, I think I went through the um, the design guide line by line and tried watching the videos um, as they related to it. I had to install some um, GitHub um, desktop. To to do some of it to 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 um, focus and commit some of um, the design issues. So some of these small small um, some of these small issues could could seem strange, but any any issues like that, I I always like go to um, the GitHub and ask questions, and you guys are happy to help. Yeah. Now, now we're in the, in the details and uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm actually at a hotel here right now and when I this is, I sometimes think about this when we go to a hotel right, you show up they're like hey how are you doing it's great to have you here they show you around they give you a little piece of chocolate they hand you your key they explain everything to you and uh, they're and we're like yeah, of course take it for granted like you know totally normal nothing crazy but then i feel like online we're sometimes 
we don't have the same expectations, right? We're not thinking about it in the same way, but we kind of should. We should have almost, you know, some welcome package that looks nice and lets people where to go and how they can ask you questions. And, and we have it in some ways, but we're by far not as refined as, as what we expect in other parts of, you know, modern day life. What's the equivalent of a chocolate on a pillow in GitHub? Yeah, I think the problem is GitHub's not a design space. Like it's a, it is, it was designed for, 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 you know, coders and that sort of intimidating. That is definitely the, there's friction there. Um, so Dolce would like to speak. I'm sorry. I don't know how that works. I, I couldn't I couldn't say better, Anna. I agree with you. But the industry is kind of very technical and we can move forward to other spaces, but but yeah, like it's also it's also good to learn how to use GitHub. I think we also happy to teach anyone or to share how to use GitHub. Like this is what I can offer. Like if somebody don't feel comfortable with GitHub, I can just walk around with you in GitHub. I wish that there was a GitHub equivalent for, for UX, for just for Figma even, to be more specific, that people could just go in and do commits and just have everything open source committing to one file and working on one project. That would be, if some developer could build that, that would be amazing. Yeah, but just- That's uh, even buildable. <laughs> I would say the, the chocolate in the hotel that we could just have is just having a short video of how to navigate the Bitcoin specific GitHub. We don't need a full intro on all the things about GitHub, but just how is the GitHub for Bitcoin design organized? What we can do to find the things that we can collaborate on? Like short video, like one, two minutes would be more than enough. So just by having Stephen tell me that there is a label of good first issues, it basically solved my question, <laughs> for example. I should like, you know, when I get tired of like working on real work, I should just like, uh, you know, go into Blender or something and like make a cool animation or something. And I'll uh, I'll make like a cool animation of good first issues like once a month, and then just like tweet that out or post it on Slack once a month, and then it'll it'll let everybody know it's there, and it will we'll have some cool and animated gifs out of it as well. Yeah, but I, in general, I mean, like UI design is yeah, you own part of of a designer's role because. Um, based on what knowledge or facts do you actually do the um, UI design, right? So you have to do some research before. Um, and I wonder, um, this, this, this whole research part, do you know, um, are there any like best practices also for that to, uh, to work together with an open source community? Or is it maybe even better to just have it in-house, fully in-house? um what are your thoughts on on like more like the input side so the so the yeah, the whole research side the data gathering side to really come up with the the actual designs because what i just think and in, in, in this moment is mm, you can like build something right um and then you maybe just need you can do that on a weekend you can do this in a designathon um but is it actually that what um the user wants right you do it based on your own knowledge based on your own experience um and user research usually takes a bit more time so um therefore i'm not i don't know yet if it really fits to the whole like open source contrib contributor mindset of okay, I do like some voluntary um, contributions here and there. Um, I usually don't have a lot of time because I do it uh, after work. Um, but UX, I think, is, is something that you have to dedicate a bit more time uh, because you did depend on, on other people responding to you and so on. 
Um, so therefore, I really wonder if it if it fits actually um, to a open design approach and and um, how could we f make it fit actually to that? I have a very good idea because I love what Moritz said because. And I know Bea's gonna nod her head because she's a researcher. Because you have to do your research, right? But you know, um, I'm curious what you guys feel about this. But I think if the problem uh, go back to what Christoph always says is, you know, you need to just narrow down whatever you're doing. I think that if you narrow down the problem that you're solving so so narrow that it becomes so narrow that it's literally one problem that you're solving and not many problems. So for example, I don't know, um, uh, the users, when they land on the homepage, they don't understand it. So maybe a homepage is even too broad. You could even just do the, the top part of the homepage. So as in that first bit that they see, and if you would get that specific, there would be time for a certain amount of user research in a design hackathon. If you narrow down your your lens so much that it's so narrow that you know there's no room for looking in other directions, um, so I think that would be possible because we did do that in the Blix Design Sprint, but we didn't do enough um, user research. Yeah, and I would also say um, user research is a tool; it, it helps with certain things. And there, it can be used, there are many different tools inside of that that can be used in many different ways. And so if you're, like what you said, you know, user needs, if you're, if you're just trying to figure out what product to build in, you just know I'm going to do something with Bitcoin and that's it, and you're trying to figure out what to do, that's really different than, let's say, people in your Telegram chat on your working product, they just keep complaining about some certain feature and you just want to improve that particular feature then you do very different types of, of research and you have, uh, you know, very, it, it, it takes a different amount of time and all of this stuff. Um, so I don't think there's a general answer. You always have to become, go into the, the specifics. And like Mo said, then, then you narrow it down and then you can split it up into smaller, smaller tasks. Mm -hmm. but I think this Thank project you. discovery is really, I mean, that's like the initial discovery. It's, it's the best time to involve a community. You just have conversations and maybe you don't even present it as a poll. You just start talking to people about things or you just ask them, hey, Wallet X, how do you do go about this or so? You can just grab from, get inspiration from everywhere. Yeah, and the good thing about Bitcoin being a never ending project or technology is the fact that we can always do all the at, at any point we can do all the points of user research so we can do discovery now we can do discovery also five years from now and we can do a specific nitty-gritty feature testing now we can do it also five years from now like it's not that we have to choose an either or we just plan the research according to what is it that we're trying to find out it's that's fine. That's the cool part that I that I like. <laughs> I, was, I was just sorry. I keep talking about. It. I just wanted to add on one thing. Something I've noticed is that it's like it's like there are currents in the Bitcoin land. People talk about certain things at certain times. There are certain problems that are in the air, and then they go away, or you know, they're just and the you can I think you can probably make the biggest difference if you focus on the things that are mo the most urgent right now. This idea of you know, you, you contribute to some public good. And the question is like, what does this public good or this community want or need right now? So if that if that's a certain problem is being solved uh, or like, like this BIP21 thing that Stephen, you know, uh, kicked off, that somehow turned into a really big thing because that's like a big interoperability thing that just a lot of people happen to have at the same time. So you can do all these things at all the times, but they're like more opportune times yeah, it can that be local or global. Something that wasn't a hundred percent clear to me is like, what what are we trying to achieve here now? Like, what is the current thing? Sorry, I I, I didn't understand completely the question. Now here in this meeting, or now here in Bitcoin Design Community as a community, Bitcoin Design Community as a community. 
Well, the thing is, is that the community is, you know, has many different projects going on. And so, you know, different people are kind of working on different things. Like, you know, for example, like Albi, the, the project Moritz is working on is kind of, um, you know, involved in the community. They have their own channel and that's kind of their own project and they, they, they have their own goals. So it's like a collaboration. Same with Zeus, same with other projects. I'd say some of the, the community's main projects are the, the Bitcoin design guide um that that's the, the primary project um that we collaborate on together and we just kind of finished a um a, a, a large uh, project to overhaul the navigation of the guide and so we're kind of looking for a next what is the next big project and um i think potential candidates for that could be um uh, merchants uh, another candidate could be uh, accessibility um, and there's always more lightning stuff to add, but that, that's kind of where we are right now. We're kind of like in between uh, big initiatives on the, the design guide. And, and also like when you create communities, you can do bottom on top, like bottom down or, or the opposite top down, right? When the Bitcoin design community start, it start like, oh, there is these amazing good designers that we cannot hire all of them and the community was created. Uh, in my personal experience, when you create a community, of course you have a why and a goal and a mission and a statement, but because the philosophy of the Bitcoin is the centralization, I think it is something that we all as a community, we are gonna be answering in the future, but you, you can find that answer right now because if we have the, this answer right now, like what, why, why, what we are doing, what we are doing, the why, how, what, uh, like a kind of the golden uh, circle in the communications is because it's it's a it's a community that is uh, bottom bottom from the bottom is very horizontal. Like it's something that you actually via you can contribute to that. Like we are all building the community together. It's not vertical. It's not a very vertical community. And the why is going to be different for each person. And this is the beautiful Bitcoin design community. And of course, this is my personal opinion. Uh, <laughs> in this, maybe Christoph has another opinion too. So I, see, that's a, that's a good thing. You can kind of pick whatever interests you the most. So I, I found my sweet spot helping with the guide, the UI kit, and the icon set, which is basically all ways to provide these design resources and other people can build on top of and that already implement a ton of best practices that really the community as a whole has come up with right so it's just, it's just kind of gathering uh, all the good pieces and trying to push forward you know little efforts to like you know create a page about sending bitcoin or whatever it is and then just creating really good resources around that and, and therefore making other people to do better design work that's kind of what i'm my main thing or the way that <clears throat> i look at it um, John's, for example, he's much more interested in his thing is about making designers better understand some of the technology and bring design and, and, and development closer together. Because one of his thesis is that if designers better understand the technology, then uh, more innovative solutions and better products will come from that. And Mo, you're really focused on research, right? So, you know, everybody can kind of pick what they want to, and everybody has their own little set of projects, and there's some overlap, sometimes for a long period of time, sometimes there isn't, and that's kind of what makes one of the... But it, it's weird, right? It's ambiguous. It takes time to find your sweet spot, I think. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, you just have to get dirty and think a little bit like, I mean, not necessarily an entrepreneur, but yeah, an entrepreneur like you start your project and you just get your hand dirty and like there's no right or wrong like you'll see as you go and that's it i mean i would argue in general we're i mean hopefully designers are about the the user experience and about you know coming back to you know what do what do people um need in order to use and invest in Bitcoin effectively um, and in a way that that makes sense. So I think there there's you know a broader mission that does bring us together at some level, right? That that why um, you know which 
yeah, which which is like a natural thing for us to be focused on. Like how how do what what is that interface that allows the world to engage and use Bitcoin? Um, and then you know what what resources do designers need from there <laughs> to um, to to get started faster uh, and to get started uh, with you know some some existing template um, that that actually is sort of vetted and makes sense and and has had multiple designers eyes on it. Um, and I, I think that in my mind, we have something here, you guys have something here of a, of a mission to, to make UX better for, um, for Bitcoin, right? Like, I, I don't know if it's, it, it's not, it's not like beginning from scratch, but it, in terms of like contributions, for sure, people could go different directions, um, that are useful. And they're definitely going to be like, new technologies like lightning network that get introduced and then suddenly you have another track of work but to me it, it's grounded in people human design and and how do you help uh develop kits and and interoperability between um different apps so that that people can you know pay and send and receive bitcoin um you know, and, and that they understand how to do that no matter what app they're using. Absolutely. I was just talking more about uh, how you get involved in the community. Like, I, I understand, like, it's not the most easy, but you just have to go for it. That's it. Yeah. yeah I think that's what a lot of people are there for, making stuff. Right, making stuff better. You know, Anna, you made it sound so easy. It's like, oh, you know, people just need to ascend and receive, and that's it. I just, <laughs> I I was like, you know, that little you? bit that Anna just said. I literally <laughs> wish that we we could almost just go back to this recording, which is amazing since it's recorded, and just just type out what she said. I just love the way she said it. It was just so beautiful. No, I really have to compliment you. I love your um your f philosophy and your approach to UX design. I just love it. It's just, that's why I'm a UX designer as well, you know? So yeah, I, I would almost go back and watch that bit and just type it out somewhere, just, you know, so I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> You're making me blush, but I think that, <laughs> I do think like for this community to gain traction, there does need to be some sort of, and, and you're starting to do it, Christoph, everybody here is, you know, who's contributed to that. Uh, the, the site and GitHub has done it. I, I just think people really need to understand why, you know, this community exists and like how they can contribute. And the mission will, if it, you know, if it's simple and inspiring, will help people understand, I think, how they can play a part in that bigger, um, you know, in this initiative. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we do have this design Bitcoin for everyone tagline at the top, but that, that can be done in so many different ways too. Right? That's where everybody can find their own way way in there. But um, we're, we're a little bit over an hour. Uh, we can keep chatting if you'd like, and also do another session like this if there's interest. Uh, what do you think? Personally, I need to bail. I need to go to okay, cool. oh, I'd be very but, happy to do another session like this if that answers the question. Uh, okay, excellent. We can also just keep talking in Slack because there is an open design channel that doesn't get much attention, but uh, we can definitely just c continue the conversation there and set up another call if you want, if there's interest. Sounds good. Sounds good. And then next week we're looking at PenPod, I think. Yeah, so for anyone not familiar with PenPod, it's like an open source version of Figma uh, by a team that previously created Taiga, if you're familiar with that pro project management tool. Um, and so they're making really amazing progress. It's a really good tool. It's not as polished maybe as, as Figma in some regards, but it's a really awesome effort. And it's a really good tool. And, uh, you know, if we're all about open source and we just complain that we don't have our own <laughs> open source tools, so... Here's one. 
That's uh, and and the Stephen, I think you wanted to create kind of a just a jam session for everyone to hop in a file, just try it out, see how it works, what's good, what's bad, and then maybe at the end uh, 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 collect some feedback, right? Yeah, exactly. We can uh, try to maybe accomplish a super super simple project together or something, and and then yeah, collect our feedback and then pass it over to them um, to improve their product because you know it also just kind of kind of is like a sequel to today's session. It's like, there, it seems like they're kind of trying to build their product very openly too. So um, not only does this give us a chance to kind of voice our concerns about what kind of product we might want, um, but uh, also to kind of see how another uh, openly, openly designed uh, community uh, handles their business. Awesome, cool. Then uh, I'd like to thank everyone for showing up. That was a really good conversation. Uh, in or I will, I will try this time to, uh, you know, upload this to YouTube. Have proper, you know, chapters in the description and a summary, um, so uh, people who who missed it can also easily kind of follow up with things, um, because we haven't been doing that. But we try to keep doing.